Hello, my name's uh, Dr. Scott Farley. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon. Um, today we're going to talk about vertebral body augmentation, um, or some people will say kyphoplasty or vertebroplasty. And so I'm going to explain to you why we would do this type of procedure. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, some, some visuals that you can get an idea of what it entails with this procedure. So imagine a patient were to we'll use a couple different scenarios, maybe falls um, and lands and has immediate pain in their back or possibly lifts up a heavy object, a flower pot, a TV, a microwave. Um, and so immediate pain occurs and a patient uh, may or may not go to the emergency room for this, but continues to have significant pain in the center of their lower back or in their thoracic or their chest type area. And so an X-ray would be taken and it'll show a bone, a vertebral body, that is slightly decreased in its height. An MRI would be then performed, or possibly a bone scan, which would show an acute fracture, or we call a compression fracture, to the vertebral body. And so, if we look at the spine, um, a vertebral body from the side, this bone, so this would be like a patient from the side view, and this is what we call a vertebral body. This would be a vertebral body, this is a different vertebral body. And so when someone were to land, they would have a fracture possibly to the end plate or the top portion of the bone which would you'd see on an x-ray and the MRI would show acute changes and so for some people there's options one would be a non um, operative with just bracing and time and symptomatically a patient will just heal and it's something that as a surgeon I'll follow uh, with serial x-rays over time there's a, a, a group of patients though um, that I see that um, either in the hospital or and are admitted to the hospital for just severe pain and patients in the community who have enough of a fracture, a large enough fracture percent of the bone and they're having significant pain with simple activities. And we're talking like sneezing and coughing and just simple movement. And for these patients that are having significant pain, uh, that have osteoporosis, risks of that fracture continuing to compress over time, Vertebral augmentation with bone cement is a great option. Is a wildly successful procedure in my practice. It's one of the most gratifying procedures that I have for a patient. The balloon is a longer, um, it has a tip here with a balloon at this end that can be inflated inside the bone. And so what it can do is take the bone and be inserted into the bone, such as this, so this would be a picture of that type of bone. And it's placed through, a cannula is placed through the pedicle into the bone, which you can see here. And so then through that cannula, this balloon is then placed into the bone and it gives the ability to then have um, an apparatus like this, which is an introducer under pressure that I can hold and then introduce cement into the vertebral uh, body and so if we're looking at that that would give a picture of the cement which you can see um, Filling the vertebral body. So this is just a model where I've taken off the top and I've put in the cement The balloon the idea behind the balloon is it creates a cavity or it pushes the trabecular bone away from an open area and can reinstitute the height of the bone once the balloon is introduced. And then the cement has a very defined area to fill. And the cement then over a minute or a minute and a half will harden and will hopefully regain height to the vertebral body, but it would keep the bone from moving. You can imagine with small uh, compression and fracture to the bone that um, it hurts with movement. So these little bony spiculars are moving past each other and causing pain. And what the cement is able to do um, is solidify that. It keeps the bone from continuing to collapse. It can help restore the height to the bone. Um, studies have shown that it decreases the risk of fractures above and below um, the current fracture. Patients, when they're in pain and unable to move, they become um, bedridden. And so this helps patients become more mobile so that patients don't develop secondary complications from the fracture such as pneumonia, blood clots, and overall fatigue um, and muscle atrophy to where patients then have a higher risk of refalling and causing wrist fractures or hip fractures. Um, so in my experience, in my practice, this is a, a very successful procedure. Um, it 
can be done as an outpatient procedure, meaning you would go home the same day as the procedure. Many times the patient would be admitted for what we call a 23 hour stay, just to evaluate a patient over the night time to make sure their pain is controlled, that there isn't any type of complication from the procedure, but each can be safe depending on the patient. The incisions um, are simply the size of what the trocar would require. So we're talking four millimeters. So for this procedure, this helps with pain, it helps with patient mobilization. It's what we call a minimally invasive procedure for a fracture. Um, and it's something that, uh, again, is very successful in decreasing pain for patients.